What VPC Flow Logs Are A feature of Amazon Web Services called VPC Flow Logs enables customers to record details about the IP traffic to and from network interfaces in a virtual private cloud. When enabled, VPC Flow Logs will record details about every IP packet that passes through the network interface such as source and destination IP addresses, source and destination ports and protocols. This data is subsequently stored in Amazon S3 or Amazon CloudWatch Logs for analysis and retention. Users can utilize VPC Flow Logs to get insight into their traffic patterns, discover and resolve issues like network connectivity issues and monitor network security by identifying potential security concerns such as anomalous or unauthorized network activities. They can also be used for troubleshooting scenarios like why specific traffic is not reaching an EC2 instance or overly restrictive security groups. Now let us see how VPC flow logs work. In this diagram you have AWS cloud and within which we have our VPC. Within the VPC we have various subnets containing different network interfaces such as EC2 instances etc. When we enable VPC flogs, you can configure it to capture metadata about every IP packet that flows through the VPC from various sources such as other AWS accounts or other VPC peering connections. Users can create VPC flow logs for an entire VPC, a subnet or a specific network interface. Additionally, they can customize the fields captured in the logs to meet their specific needs such as logging only specific IP ranges or protocols. This data is then stored in specified Amazon S3 bucket or CloudWatch log group, which you can later analyze using various tools and techniques. A new log stream or log file object is created for each new network interface as soon as any network traffic is recorded for that network interface. Now let's have a look at what is not captured by VPC flow logs. There are certain types of traffic that are not logged by VPC flow logs. Specifically, VPC flow logs do not capture the actual content of the IP packets. So, any data that is encrypted or hidden within the packet payload will not be visible in the logs. Also, there are certain types of traffic that are not logged by VPC flow logs. What are they? Traffic generated by instances when they contact the Amazon DNS server. If you use your own DNS server, then all the traffic to that DNS server is logged. Traffic that is not IP protocol based, such as address resolution protocol, ARP or internet control message protocol, ICMP. Traffic generated by a Windows instance for Amazon Windows license activation. Traffic to and from 169.254.169.254 .169 for instance metadata. Traffic to from 169.254.169.123 for the Amazon Time Sync service. DHCP traffic. Traffic that is encrypted using protocols such as Secure Sockets Layer SSL or Transport Layer Security TLS as the content of the packets cannot be read by the VPC flow logs. Traffic between an endpoint network interface and a network load balancer network interface. It is important to keep in mind that while VPC flow logs are a valuable tool for monitoring network traffic and identifying potential security threats, they are not a replacement for other security measures such as access control policies, intrusion detection systems, or network segmentations. Organizations should use the combination of tools and techniques to ensure the security of their AWS environment. Now let's have a look at different fields in the VPC log files. First column is version. It is a version of the flow log and it is transparent to us. AWS manages these versions. A new version is released if there is a change in any features to the flow logs. Next you have account ID that is the account ID for the flow log which would be your account ID. Usual practices uh, in the bigger organizations is that the logging should be centralized in a single account. So if you have multiple accounts, let's say development, uh, test, production, etc. You can push the logs to the central log accounts. So this account ID field will help differentiate from which account flow log request is coming. Then you have interface ID, the ID for the network interface for which the traffic is being recorded. Remember, the flow logs always capture traffic for the network interface. Then we have a source address that is source IPv4 or IPv6 address 
It is the address from where the request is originated, followed by the destination address. That's the destination IPv4 or IPv6 address. It is the address where the traffic is destined. Thing to remember here is these IP addresses of the network interface is always its private IPv4 address of the uh, EC2 instances or whatever interface we are using. Next we have source port and the destination ports. After that the protocol. That's the IANA protocol number of the traffic. Then we have packets. That's the number of packets transferred during the capture window. These are network packets which contain the data. They are actually a unit of measure of the data. Next you have bytes. That's the number of bytes transferred during the capture window. Then we have start and end times of the request. That is the time since it was received and until it ended. And then you have action. That's the action associated with the traffic, which implies what was the response from the destination. Accept means the recorded traffic was permitted by the security groups or network ACLs and rejected means it was denied. Next you have log status, that's the logging status of the flow log. It means data is logging normally to the chosen destination. No data means there was no traffic recorded to or from the network interface during the capture window. Then we have VPC ID, subnet ID, indicating the VPC and subnet to which the traffic belongs. TCP flags are the header indicating the status of the log and then finally we have type indicating the type of traffic that generated the log record which can be accepted or rejected. Learn with WizLabs. Success. Certified.